Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. My goodness gracious, thank you for praying for your pastor. So good to be back home and to fellowship with you and just to share with you. I know we've got a beautiful hour of worship uh, together in the house of God. Can we all say amen? Amen. 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 We're going to light the candles as is our tradition. And Miss Cindy is uh, covering our music today. We're so excited for that. The altar is open if you want to kneel a few moments while we have the opening. And then we'll have Miss Holly to give us our invocation from our Stephen ministry. Thank you, Miss Cindy. We're so appreciative to have you to lead us in worship today. As you know, on the second Sunday of each month, we continue our tradition, have one of our Stephen leaders, and usually Holly is with us to pray. We're so glad. We hear your hubby is here today, too. Let's welcome her dear hubby back. Yay, 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 yay. Let me mention, as I always do, Holly, that if anybody here has somebody that just needs some extra tender, loving care, Stephen Ministry may be right for you. Talk to Holly right after the service. She'll be more than glad to share with you. Holly? Good morning. Good morning. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We've come here today to praise you and worship you. We ask that our hearts be open to hear your word so that we may learn more of what you would have us do. Bless all of us here today and those who could not be with us. Lord, let your Holy Spirit be with us today as we hear Pastor Eddie's words. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I am here. <laughs> um, first of all, if we have any visitors, just raise your hand if you are a visitor, if, you, if you're at the church for the first time. Good, we have some visitors over here. Just want to let you know that when you go out the doors over to our right, we have a welcome center, and we have a gift for you for coming to our church, and so we really appreciate it, and thank you for coming. Anybody else a visitor for the first time? We love visitors. We hope if you're looking for a church that you'll consider coming back and visiting with us. 
Also, uh, the pew pads are in the, in the pews. If you would like to put your name down and information, and if there's any changed information, put that down, and the, the office will certainly get a hold of you. They are collected every week so that we can um, find out if we need to do something or contact you in some way, shape, or form. So I do have some announcements that I want to lift up this morning. First of all, Monday is our um, Stephen Ministry training. So if you're a part of the Stephen Ministry training, it's in the Fellowship Hall at 5 o'clock. Also on Tuesday, we have our Finance Committee. And um, if you were not able to be at our meeting that we had two times on Friday about the disaffiliation from the United Methodist Church, I highly recommend that you find out about the Zoom meetings. There will be two Zoom meetings at the end of the month that you can find out this information that, that was gone over. It was They called it like giving information like a fire hose, and it was. It just blasted us with a lot of information. So I highly recommend that you go on the website or get the, get the uh, code to get on the Zoom meeting. So the Finance Committee, definitely this might be one of the most important finance committees we have this year, talking about the monies for disaffiliation. And then right after the Finance Committee at 3 o'clock will be our transition uh, meeting led with Bob, um, Bob White to um, decide how they're going to handle things because on March 22nd there will be an administrative board meeting and the this, what we're announcing, the, how we want to disaffiliate, will be coming up at that very important meeting at, on the 22nd. And please remember that in this church, not all churches, but in this church, if you're a member, you have voice and vote. So it's very important that you be a part of this uh, transition that we're going to be making. Also, uh, 5 o'clock on Tuesday is the grief class, and so it's not just close, it's not just our church, it's for people outside of our church. So if you know somebody that has recently lost someone, or even not recently that they're still struggling, please invite them to our grief class, and uh, it certainly will help. Thursday, we have our worship service at 3 o'clock here in the sanctuary. It is a worship service. It's not a, it's not a uh, Bible study. And we have a lot of fun. We recognize birthdays and, and anniversaries, and we, we sort of cut a rug sometimes. And um, so anyway, 3 o'clock is our meeting, is our worship uh, meeting. And then at 4.15, it'll be the last segment of the, the movie Flywheel. And if you haven't seen Flywheel, if you didn't catch the beginning of it, you'll find out why used, used car salesmen get their name and their reputation. So that, that should pique your interest just a little bit. Uh, and then Thursday night at 7 o'clock is the worship committee. And there's quite a few of us on the worship committee. And if there's something that you would like done, changed, or recommend, or whatever about worship, I promise you that if you get it to somebody on the worship committee, it will be brought up and it will be handled. We don't just table stuff because somebody else had an idea. So uh, we're open to that. Saturday is our uh, women, United Meth Women's Spaghetti Dinner. It's from 4 to 6. The tickets are $10. You can buy tickets still today. It's takeout only. So you come between 4 and 6, get your dinner, and then you take it home and put it out on a, a pretty dish and tell your husband you made it yourself. And um, <clears throat> so that'll, <laughs> that'll be wonderful. And then on next Sunday at 3 o'clock is a softball game. I don't know who's playing, but there's a softball game, and it's behind uh, Scully's. It's at the uh, Eugene Martin Field. And so um, lots, lots of activities going on within the church we are we are not stopping we may be moving but we're not stopping and uh so anyway we're we're glad you're here for that so right now i think june if you'll call us to worship <coughs>
morning. If you all stand and join me as we sing our hymn of praise this morning, and if you'll turn to page 139 in your hymn books, and we'll sing first, second, and uh, third verses of praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please remain standing, if you will, and Ms. Sherry will lead us in our responsive reading. Our Psalter today is found on number 758. It will be on the screen, but if you want to look in your, in your hymnal, the uh, choir will sing through the response once, and then we'll join in, and we will do verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes shall stumble and fall. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the Lord's temple. Continue standing and join with our Apostle Creed found on number 881, and it also will be on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall he judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
You may be seated and ask now if you turn to the other side of your bulletin. We do have uh, some update of the prayer concerns. We do this every week and we just believe it's that important for you to know how to pray for our sisters and brothers. Uh, Lynn Rinko went on to heaven. Many of you may have already known that, but if you can keep Lois in your prayers, there does not appear to be any memorial service being set up, so just keep them lifted up. We also received a call from Evelyn Peterson, Evelyn Pelton Peterson, and her husband Pete just passed away this week, uh, so if you can keep them in your prayers. I was able to go over the end of the week at Tom Wilkerson's house. Tom and Malvery are members of our church, and I know some of the family is here And uh, we just want to be in prayer for Tom as he gets closer every day to going on to being with Jesus. And it was a beautiful prayer time there. And he loves the Lord so much. And we know that that, uh, his wife and daughter are taking such wonderful care of him. I spent a little bit of time yesterday on the phone with Bonnie Russell. She is in the hospital. She went home and had to go back. And she is better. We got a call last night. Um, that her numbers are back up, uh, which is a good sign. But uh, Bonnie's just really has had a terrible struggle with COVID and attacking um, her kidney uh, as well. So please keep her in your prayers, if you will. Those that have been in the hospital for surgery this week, Jim Pott, Faye Rogers, and Jim Corbett, and they've all contacted us and let us know that they're doing okay. And we thank the Lord for that. Betty Collins has been taken to Seven Rivers dealing with dehydration. Joanne Pruitt's daughter, Suzanne. um, Joanne comes at the Thursday worship service, uh, has been taken to Advent Hospital in Ocala with internal bleeding. And she called me and asked if we'd be in prayer. So if you would pencil in Suzanne, her last name is Miller. And we just heard that Gretchen DeVeres, many of you know Gretchen, has been taken to the hospital. So we did not know that or have any update on Gretchen at this time. Two of our dear ladies are coming back from Emmaus today, Mary Cinco and Karen Jones, and I know they've had a wonderful time. We're anxious to hear about their experience and maybe somebody else here in the near future when we have another walk to Emmaus uh, would like to be a part of that. And I'm going to actually lift up the Emmaus story a little bit in the sermon uh, today as well. And then, of course, the last one that I have is the Ukraine, and I know that we're all very familiar with that, uh, but we just want you to continue to just lift that need up to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to be putting in the bulletin next week uh, an avenue uh, where you can uh, send funds. My wife and I have have worked through this agency. It's called the World Methodist uh, Evangelism Fund, and uh, and it's Wesleyans all over the globe. And we have supported them before and have for the Ukraine. So you might want to be a part of that. And so we'll have that in the bulletin next week if you'd like to participate. Hold these in your hands, if you will. And Sherry, if you'll come and just lead us to the good Lord. uh, And then we'll end with the Lord's Prayer, of course. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you this morning with praise and adoration. We know that when we put you first, that all other things just fall into line. So, Father, we're putting you first this morning. We put you first every morning. When we open our eyes, our first thought should be of you, not of that first cup of coffee, but of you. So, Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your patience that we're such a stubborn people sometimes we can be so stiff-necked and we can be disobedient so father we thank you for being patient with us we thank you that you're willing to give us more than one chance or two chance that you will give us a chance as long as we come back to you which today the gathering as long as we gather with you things will be okay so father we we lift up uh those that have been in the world we lift up ukraine what they're fighting for they're fighting for their homeland they're fighting for freedom as bobby said earlier today we take things for granted that we haven't had to do without we have suffered over the years with different situations but we have not gone through what ukraine is going through father i ask you right now to 
to surround the, the government of Russia and just soften their heart. Don't let him be a Pharaoh. Soften his heart, Lord, that these are, these are human beings. You need to, we need to love one another. That's what we're commanded to do. We're to love our enemies. We're to love one another. We're to, to give what we have extra, not take it away. So, Father, Ukraine and Russia are in your hands, and we will continue to pray. We will continue to support with, with all we have. But in, it all comes down to what you will do. So, Father, we do have so many on our prayer list this morning that Pastor has lifted up. And first of all, Lord, thank you for healing healing Pastor Eddie. Thank you for allowing him to come back into the, the fold again. But, Father, we pray that he will take care of himself, that we don't have to have a relapse, that we don't have to have a rerun of this. So, Father, just take care of him, take care of his family, and, and thank you the way you have over the past couple weeks. Father, we lift up those that have lost loved ones this week. Be with their wives, be with their caregivers, be with their families as they go through. We know that that um, Pete and, and Lynn both loved you so much and they're in your arms. So, Father, you take care of them and we'll take care of the family that's left. Be with Tom as he transitions from this earthly life into your life. And, Father, be with Bonnie. She's so anxious to come back. But, again, Father, just keep her, keep her tethered so that she can totally heal and totally rejuvenate and re-energize before she comes back and takes on the work that you have called her to do. Be with Betty Collins. Be with Suzanne Miller. Be with those that have had surgery this week and praise the Lord. They're home and healing, and they're going to be back with us shortly. Father, we lift up today, we lift up John Taylor as he leaves this week to fly back to Ohio for his granddaughter's brain surgery on the 27th, I think, or 23rd. And so, Father, we just ask you to be with the Taylor family and just just love on them and, and let, let John's faith just be so strong in that whole situation that everyone up there will know that God is in control. And also, Father, we lift up the Sanders, Ray and Kathy Sanders, for that tornado yesterday. A tree fell on their car and has totally crushed their there at the top of their car so father we ask you to to be with the sanders today or they would have been at church today thank you for the emmaus walk thank you that people are drawn to to get deeper into your word and your prayers and that they will come back so ready to lead a group and to pray with a group and father we just thank you for that and be with gretchen this morning and father be with our church be with be with the global church be with the united methodist church father the split is going to happen, and we just ask you to be the arbitrator, be, be the head of what's going to happen, and that, that everybody can go away from the table feeling the peace that passes all understanding. It probably won't happen, but that's what we pray for, that your peace and our understanding will be hand in hand. So, Father, right now I ask those here that they would lift up their private petitions of family and friends that they have on their heart, that they're in their minds, and they may be on just the tip of their tongue, that they would lift up those names right now. Holy Father, we thank you for hearing our petitions. And now let's pray the prayer that the disciples said, Jesus, how do we know how to pray? And Jesus said, these are the words that you say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. If you would stand this morning for the Holy Scripture, our scripture this morning is taken from Luke 13, 31 to 35. And if you'll notice, we're actually going to go backwards. The lectionary doesn't go in order. 
So next week, we actually will be at the beginning of chapter 13, but today we're on 31 to 35. <clears throat> at that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else, Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell the fox I will keep driving out demons and healing the people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can be outside of die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you are you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. No, don't be seated. Don't be seated. Don't be seated. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> if you will join me for our hymn of preparation on page 261. And we'll sing the first two verses of The Lord of the Dance, page 261. Now you may be seated. You can see why that was important to remain standing or you wouldn't have been dancing as we were singing that great song unto the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that Paul Tegan, hey, Paul is back with us. Let's welcome Paul today. Paul is a member of our church. They had moved away, but I understand that he's moving back, or at least part of the time going to be back here, he and Tracy and uh, Kathy, and so we're excited about that and his family. So, Paul, we praise the Lord. Do you still have your Corvette, Paul? No. Oh, well, then you can go back up there, then I'll tell you. <laughs> Good to have you home with us very much. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Let me uh, mention that uh, if you get a chance this week, please go online at the... Uh, uh, on YouTube and, and watch the 930 service. Sherry gave the sermon at 930 and did a tremendous job, uh, as she always does. And I would encourage you to, uh, to go there and let that just be a daily devotional, whatever day of the week. Um, I, I would encourage you to do that. I think you would be thoroughly blessed um, in that experience. Um, Sherry has been so good uh, for me personally here at the church for our leadership team because I'm trying to recover from COVID myself, um, it's just taken a lot more time than, than I thought. And so I have asked some of our retired ministers, and I know a couple of them are here today. I see Mike uh, Neidhart and Dale Burns is in the choir and uh, also some others. Um, uh, Becky is going to be one. It's going to help me. And they're going to have different Sundays where they're going to preach at least one of the three services so I can get back on my feet. Amen? So that you've got wonderful speakers and teachers, and they're going to be a tremendous blessing uh, for all of us. I'm just so thankful to be a part of this dear family. Our choir is going to bless us now, so let's draw close to the Lord Jesus Christ as we prepare our hearts for our message this morning.
Thank you, choir. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If you are here with us during the Advent season, we always have a litany from Kevin King. Kevin's mother, Jerry, is a member of our church, and Kevin has written a litany as well uh, for this season of Lent, and I'd like to share it with you. As we experience the daily struggles, frustrations, and fears of life, May we see you, O Lord, as our refuge and fortress. When sometimes we feel lonely and far away from you, let us remember, O Lord, that nothing can separate us. In the times when we decide to navigate life on our own and find ourselves in trouble, may we realize, O Lord, that wherever we go, you will find us. When we feel that we are not worthy, May we recall, O Lord, that we are your dear children, love without condition. If we think that we've used up the last portion of your patient kindness, may we not forget, O Lord, that you shower us with grace as we shelter underneath your wings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these beautiful, encouraging words to lead us into worship. We ask for your blessings. Remind us always that underneath are the everlasting arms of Almighty God. We are shielded by your wonderful wings, your protection, and your guidance. We pray this in Christ's most precious name. Amen and amen. Sherry mentioned in prayer of Ray and Kathy Sanders, many people struggled with that terrible storm that came through yesterday and um, big old tree fell on their car it's a new car too so please keep them in your prayers many of you know Ray and Kathy well as they tried to to get that taken care of Uh, Ray told me last night said there was glass everywhere uh, in their car and thank the good Lord they were not in there but it hit right across from the uh, thrift store so the folks the leadership team of our church was calling about that and everybody was okay out on 200 as well and just a variety of places so I'm so thankful that uh, did not seem to be any fatalities in the midst of those terrible storms can we all say amen amen Amen. and we just continue to, to lift up Uh, As I mentioned earlier, the Ukraine, they're just, you know, it's puzzling to us watching this unfold before our very eyes and the effects that it has on all of us in so many ways besides broken hearts, uh, the gas prices, just everything. Those of you that are, uh, have stocks and watching all the difficulties there because of that, dear friends, we do live in troubled times. We know that we live in troubled times, but God is still on the throne. And I thank the Lord so much that in the midst of the struggles of our denomination, in the midst of all these other crazy things going on in the globe, that uh, we have a wonderful leadership team right here in the church. And the transition team is meeting this week. Our leadership team, they'll be making the motion for the board meeting coming up. Uh, Then there will be a set Uh, church conference and you will all hopefully attend all of these uh, opportunities that are before you uh, for us to make these transitions and we have seen leadership from the global methodist church that that is outstanding and um, in every gathering they've had uh, there were people that came to cause problems there was here and our safety team was amazing to stand out there and make sure some of the people i know personally which was very sad Um, But they were causing disruption, and Jay Farrell was very strong and just said, unless you're here for the right reasons, you do not need to enter in. So uh, it was all handled very professionally, and we are just so blessed with our safety team. And uh, John, our president, also traveled up because they did not have a safety team up in Jacksonville and took care of that church up there. Uh, as well. So we know the good Lord has blessed us right here at this church. Can we all say amen one more time? Now we titled the message today, The Gathering. Um, I love gatherings. I think you do too or you wouldn't be here today. There's something about being at a church gathering. 
You know, I have an acronym for the word church, Christ hopes you are coming home. I, I think it's a wonderful feeling of fellowship. And when COVID broke out, that was very difficult because people were uh, disenfranchised from the church. And I have one dear gentleman in the church that lost his spouse during that time. And he came to me the other day and he said, please, please. He said, if something happens again, please don't close the church again. He said, I just was all alone, all alone. Then, you know, there's just something about being together in the family of God and sharing with one another. And it's a gathering and Jesus is gathering us together. And, and when I reminisce about the importance of gatherings, I always go back to my earliest childhood. And my wife, Nancy, said that's, again, the reason that I'm in love with chicken, and especially fried chicken, is that we gathered at my uncle's place down in South Florida when I was just a little boy. And he had, was far better off than the, all the rest of our family members. So he had a swimming pool. He was on a canal that went out into the ocean. He had a sailboat. He sailed up and down the coast. It just we all adored him. And just it was great to, to, to be at his house and just to enjoy. You could fish out on, in the canal. And, um, but he brought in tons of Kentucky fried chicken. So Nancy said, that's, that's the reason, the gathering in your mind. It's that comfort food. And maybe it is. Maybe Maybe it is. I've lifted that up before. Do you remember the TV show a while back where people gathered and everybody knows your name? Do y'all remember that, the TV show? So we love those kind of gatherings. Well, in this passage of Scripture, for some reason, there are those that will not gather. And that is the first challenge I have from the Word of God today, is that is there those under my influence that are not gathering into the kingdom of God. And what do I need to do about that? Can I do anything about that? The A of our ABCs, it's just a simple prepositional phrase where it says, at that time, at that time, Jesus looked at Herod and he called him a fox. A fox. Now, I love the description Sherry gave. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert if you get a chance to watch the service. I didn't know this, but Sherry, in her research, she said that that concept in that day and age, calling somebody a, a fox, gave the idea that they were insignificant. Now, we always look at it, the idea of being sly and crafty, and I'm sure that's part of it too. But the idea that Jesus was saying to Herod that he was insignificant compared to his ministry. I think that's powerful. I just not heard that, Sherry, before. I love that concept there. The idea of Jesus trying to gather the church and him calling this king a fox. And you know that's derogatory. Now, he didn't back up. He didn't say, well, you know, uh, maybe he had a rough childhood. <laughs> He didn't say that, uh, well, maybe he got up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, you know, if things were different, if he'd grown up in a different church, maybe things would have been better for him. He just called things the way they were. A derogatory term there to make a statement, which I think means something to us today. It's a strong statement that he is making to the people around him that are to be gathered unto himself. Now, I'm sure if Jesus had done that today, there would be those going to Jesus and saying, you know what, you know, you're not acting very Christian with that, Jesus. You know, I don't know what's wrong with you, Jesus, but it's not Christian to call Herod a fox. You know, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Jesus. Well, I mentioned earlier at the 8 o'clock service, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I don't know if I want to be defined as a Christian anymore. The word Christian has so many connotations, you know, and just people have different ideas of what it means to be a Christian. I want to be a follower of the biblical Jesus, amen? I just want to follow whatever Jesus says to follow here. And Jesus calls this man a fox. Now, if you were here with us the other evening, now this is what's very much on my mind. It may not be what's on your mind, so you, I'll tie it to what's on your mind in a minute. But the only thing I can do is your pastors give an example from my background. We had uh, Brother Alex from the conference come and speak to us, which is part of the process of disaffiliation. Maybe all of you were there. 
And I love Alex. I love him. I've known him for many years, and I think he's a very fine gentleman there. But I didn't want to raise any questions during the meeting. I wanted you to do that. But uh, afterwards, I called him, and I wanted to talk to him because I said, you're making all kinds of promises here. And I said, but this is going on, I know, in our conference. Now, I said, you mentioned about the rules are probably going to change in the future, but they haven't changed yet. And only general conference, which we do not meet, obviously, can change those rules. I said, but we have two uh, young people in our conference that are going through the ordination process that both are self-avowed practicing homosexuals. They say that. They posted that on Facebook. I've watched it and, and watched their full program. And one of them is in this district right here, Miss Aaron. The other is Kip Nelson down in Miami. And I said, so what about that? I said, I understand that the rules may change in the future, but if there's a promise, that's our safeguard right now. We're holding on to that, and we want to trust what you say. We don't want to be deceived. So I need to understand. I'm missing something here. We're not following the rules now. So you're telling us new rules are set in place that we will follow, of course, in the future that will be even better. So I said, help me here. And his simple response, you know, and I love the man dearly, as I said, but his simple response is, speaking from the bishop's office, he is the voice of the bishop, he said, that has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with me whatsoever. Now, how in the world can the leadership of the conference say that an ordinan, somebody that's going to be a pastor within the conference, has nothing to do with them the criteria they have to follow. I, I, don't, I don't understand what they do. That's wrong. That's deception. That's just not, that's not right. Everybody has a right, and you may have different opinions on this topic yourself, but, it, but, but the rules are set right now, and we are to follow the rules. That's our safeguard. That's what protects us, and that is why there is consternation. Jesus would say, thou fox. I want you to hear me now. Jesus would say that. This is being sly. This is being, this is deceptive. You know, this is just not where it should be. Even Jesus, when he met with the woman at the well, you remember when he said, how about going home, getting your husband to come and let's sit down and talk together. And she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. The five you've had before are all gone. And the one you have now, whatever kind of relationship you're in, it's not your husband. He's not taking care of you. And Jesus called things as they were, just as they were. And dear friends, this is what I believe God is calling us as a church to do. But now I said, let me tie it to you personally. What about you personally? Maybe you're in an awkward situation with a neighbor or a friend or a family member. And you just don't know what to do, but your conscience is very clear on one side. You need to be strong for the Lord. The Bible teaches us to follow the truth, and the truth will set you free. You need to always follow the truth, no matter how difficult it is. Stand up for what is right in your personal life, your church life, your country's life. Just stand up for what is right. Can you say amen? amen. Now, the B of our ABCs, dear friends... Jesus said, and this is what's really interesting here about those that will not come to him. Jesus said, blessed, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, speaking of himself. He's quoting from Psalm 118, verse 26. And that's the verse that we always pay attention to uh, on Palm Sunday. We usually have the choir here at this service, but we lift it up anyway when we wave our palm branches. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a great quotation. What Jesus is saying here, he said, there are those that see me right now, even King Herod. He said, but they will not see me again until they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What that means is if they don't say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, they will not see me again, even if I'm right in their face, even if I'm right around them. And friends, listen to me. There are people that are right in the face of Jesus, but they don't see him. They don't see him at all because they're not saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For he who comes in the name of the Lord follows the scriptural passages. He is the one that teaches us to follow his truth and the truth will set you free. Can we say amen again? It is. Now, 
dear friends, the idea of Jesus coming into Jerusalem and saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times, like a mother hen, I wanted to gather you under my wings, but you would not come. You just would not come. I mentioned at the uh, 8 o'clock service, and Sherry had a story a lot like this um, that she had read as well. And I wonder if it wasn't the same story. I don't know. I'd read it in the Reader's Digest, and it talked about uh, a fire that had taken over a, a, a barn or a farm. And it said that when they were trying to, to see if there was anything left after the fire, they found this little heap. They weren't quite sure what it was, and they kicked it over, and it was a mother hen that had just grabbed her little chicks to protect them, and the fire came, and it destroyed her, the heat. But when they kicked over the carcass, those little chicks were a little, they were alive. And I remember reading that in the Reader's Digest a thousand years ago, you know, and I just thought, what a neat story that is, because it reflects so much this passage of Scripture. Jesus is saying, I want the, my, my children to come to me, but they will not come, because they will not come to the biblical Jesus. They will not come to the one that is the Lord and Savior of all. And why? Why in the world would you not come? Because, remember, John the Baptist makes it clear that the way to get to Jesus is a baptism of repentance. And a lot of the world does not want to repent of their sins. Number one, they don't want to call what they're doing is sin. And they do not want to clean up their act. They don't want to. And so, therefore, they're going to say, the Jesus I see, the Jesus I love, the Jesus I talk to, he, he's, he's fine with whatever I do. That's just wrong. That's not what the Word of God says. And they will not see Jesus, and they're going to be confused. They're going to be deceived because they're not going to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And then finally today, the C of our ABCs. The end of this passage, it says, in any case, Jesus said, I got to keep on keeping on. I got to do my work as insignificant as these other things are. And I could spend all my time dealing with them. He said, I got to keep on preaching, teaching, healing, getting rid of the demons. And then on the third day, we know the resurrection, of course. And you know, friends, that's where God wants us to be today. As I begin to wrap up this part of the worship service, God wants us to be clear that we're going to keep on keeping on. I thought first about the great book of Joshua, first chapter, first nine verses, three times. God says to Joshua, be very strong and courageous. I thought about the great story of Esther in the Old Testament and how that God called Esther to stand strong, as scary as that was, to stand up before the king and to, to stand up for her people. And she was willing to do it. And I'm sure that she was scared to death, but she was willing to do it. I thought about the great story of Naaman, how that he came to see Elisha. And when he came to see Elisha, he told him to go to the Jordan River and wash. You remember? Seven times, not five times, not four times. You know, some people say, well, I don't think the Bible has to be exact. It was for Naaman. It was for Naaman. I'm telling you, if he had washed or dipped in the water six times, he would have still had leprosy. God has a purpose of saying, this is what you do and this is what you don't do. And so he said, you wash seven times, not three times, not four times, seven times. And when God says something is wrong in the Bible, it's wrong. Amen. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I don't care what anybody says. It's wrong. And it needs to be shouted from the rooftop. And what God said, yes, then it is yes, 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 yes. He is exact. This is his word. This is his word. And Naaman seven times dips in the Jordan River, comes up, and he is restored. He is restored because he was obedient. He was obedient. Now, the Lord laid this on my heart for a final prayer. You know, um, the storm yesterday, I was praying about this all day yesterday. You know, how to, I, uh, I, the Lord has laid on my heart to start, as you know, come out here and just pray with you a minute for closing. You know, and I was thinking of the message, of course, and that storm. And I remembered in Kentucky, when I used to live up there, a lot of homes had shelters underground because of tornadoes and other things. And um, I visualized Jesus standing at a shelter. And there I am out there trying to get there, and a tornado's coming. 
you know, and I'm trying to get there. But there's boulders in the way, you know, struggle. I'm trying to get over there. I just can't do it. And I'm just like, Jesus, you know, and he's got the door open. And then I saw the most unusual thing in my prayer. I saw Jesus with a big old sledgehammer. Kind of like Paul Bunyan, you know, I just, I did. And so what he was doing, and he was breaking the boulders for me, amen? Just breaking the boulders, you know? And so what came to me in that prayer was there's things that are keeping us from getting gathered in by Jesus. It may be anger. It may be resentment. Uh, Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's arrogance, pride. I don't know, whatever it is, you know, there's things that are keeping us. You know what they are. Try to visualize in a moment here of prayer that the Lord is trying to gather you in, gather you in, and see him with the sledgehammer, and see him break those boulders as you're praying for them. All right, let's close our eyes. Lord Jesus, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you. I see the storm raging. The wind is howling. I'm having a hard time getting in. The wind is blowing me back having trouble getting over some of these humongous boulders. I cry out to you, Jesus. And there you are with that sledgehammer. What is it, congregation? What do you see? What what does it represent for you? And just bam, bam, bam. Let him break the boulders. Let him break the boulders. Grab his hand and let him pull you into the shelter. He wants to gather you under his wings and keep you safe. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together. (coughs) If you'll join me for our hymn of benediction. Uh, It is page 141 in your hymnals, and we'll be singing the first, second, and the last verses of Children of the Heavenly Father, 141. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to the close of our service. But Father, we don't just leave, we have gathered. So we're still going to gather, we're going to gather around tables, we're going to gather at houses, and we're going to put you foremost. So Father, we, we ask you today to, we realize that we have three choices. Three choices are we can reject you, We can be indifferent towards you, or we can accept you. And Father, we want acceptance. We want all of those close and dear to us and those that we don't even know to accept you. And so now, Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit go before us, walk beside us, stand behind us and protect our back, and dwell within our hearts so that when we go into the mission field, we can do the job that you have called us to do until you call us home again. In Jesus' name and all the believers said, amen.
may be seated. It is a blessing to have all of you gathered here again in worship and in celebration. We ask that you reflect upon the message and the music and the scriptures and all that we've experienced together in this last hour as we extinguish our candles. Miss Cindy, we're so appreciative of today, will give us our postlude. Let's all rise together, dear friends. Turn and wave at your neighbor. Hope to see you next Sunday morning.